the first step, even though people are going to listen to that and they, they're going to hear business, then empire. Mm -hmm. But what you didn't, what, you, what people are not going to look at is that you had to understand what it took to be a family member first, to even Absolutely. open that business, Absolutely. to even see that legacy. Mm -hmm. So the steps to open up a, a holistic business is to see your purity, to see your flaws, to see your ugly, to see what you don't want to bring into the business and what you do want to bring in the business mm -hmm. and really just constantly get to know yourself. It's not overnight. <laughs>
it could be down there. All right, y'all. I don't mind. My voice is impactful. I don't need. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if people think this is my ear. It's just sliding off, and I don't want to be talking and it go like this, you know? No, it's all good. You it's sure? Cool. Look, this is a raw podcast. This is a raw. Thank you for this reminding me. This I'm isn't human. like, this oh, isn't a movie type I got an idea, thing. y'all. Hold on. Wait a minute. You going to put it on and put the hat on, huh? I wonder oh. if it's, it may or may not it work. It sounded smart at it first. It may or may not work. Let me try it one more time. It sounded smart. It may or may not work. <laughs> you got to put, I'm about to say, you got to apply a little pressure. Oh. But it worked, though. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It worked, though. Let me put this in the back. It may. Be able to slant it a little bit like a little cowgirl. Hold on. There we go. We What's got it. Thing? We What's got it. Thing? No, it looked good though. Okay, it looked, wait, it looked good how you had it. It looked good how you had it. For real. Does it did. It, it looks good. How you, look at yourself. I do you don't cute. even see it. I do look cute now. Hold on. <laughs> I threw this hat on because my edge is not done. They be judging you if your edge is not done nowadays. Mm. Good. I'm thankful that I love being natural. Okay. All right, y'all. Hold on. Because I don't want to keep moving during this podcast. No, you good. Look, no, this is this is wrong. They're gonna literally listen to this. Be like, no, okay, right, right. She le she legit like <laughs> putting doing, on her hat. Yeah, she like, but that's what you gotta do. Like, look, y'all, y'all gotta be real. I think I look good now. Hold on, <laughs> the hat look wide. No, y'all, look. Look, right, look do it, do it, do it without it. It's all okay. Good. Yeah, do I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. without it. I'm feeling a little bit better without it. You good? Let me see. Let me good. try to put this up. I love this podcast, y'all. This is a lit podcast. And especially for black women who we be having to make sure we look okay because they already judge us so hard. So yeah, just leave it with my headphones. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At it's least, put, at least, is it decoration for the look? now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm gonna say because I really don't need to hear myself, but if it's for the look, I can hear you as long as I can hear you. We good. Okay, okay. Let's. Because I know it's working. You said I look like I'm from, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a DJ. That's lit. That's lit. D -d 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 DJ naughty body. Not naughty body. <laughs> That's what they used to come in. All right, we done. Sorry, y'all. It's all good. It's all good. All right, so let's let's get right into it. I yeah. want people to know who you are, what you do. Yeah. Like, let's start from the beginning. Like, what brought you? Mm. What do you do? And then we'll go from there. All right, so I need everybody to Google this when you get home. Holistic marketing. Mm -hmm. It's a totally... It's not really a new term. I think it's more popular now because people are getting healthier. Yep. I don't know if you guys know a lot about astrology, but we're in the age of Aquarius, which yes. means people are naturally getting more conscious about everything. Mm -hmm. Conscious about money. That's why we have more black businesses on the rise. Yep. Everybody was an entrepreneur 2020 during a, during a huge pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So the level of consciousness is increasing. So that literally is making us look at our businesses differently. Mm -hmm. So holistic marketing is looking at all parts of your business and making them whole. Yep. How do you spell the word holistic? Do you know? H O L I S T I C. Okay, now if you put a W in the front, how do you is it gonna change the way it sounds? No. It's gonna sound like what? It's gonna sound like whole. Whole, right. Right. Like a whole holistic, right? right. Mm -hmm. So when I tell people, because people always ask me that, well, what's the difference from regular marketing and holistic marketing? Mm -hmm. And I tell them, well, it's it's the perspective. Right. Okay. So Teach I don't look some. at okay, I know I love I love explaining it because it's honestly the sexiest thing I get to do. The the way I want people to start looking at their businesses through the way I teach marketing is the way you look at your body, right? Okay. So if you didn't have two legs, would you have a whole body? Nope. If you didn't have a heartbeat, would you have a whole body? I don't. I don't think I would have one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be a skeleton, right? Right. So your body is a whole because all of the parts are working simultaneously together. They're exactly. in a tangle together. Mm -hmm. The only reason you're able to breathe right now is because your brain is thinking. Exactly. Right. So. Um, and it's so funny I'm talking about I just use that analogy my rest in peace to my uncle he just died of dementia and if anybody has ever suffered with anybody um, with dementia it literally takes over your body because your brain stops right. telling what everything yep. else to do right mm -hmm. so it's so funny I just use that analogy, um, analogy but holistic marketing is looking at all parts of your business your internal marketing mm -hmm. HR right everyone thinks HR is totally separate than marketing it's literally marketing for your employees Literally, if they you have to for, sell your employ, sell your talent for your business. Correct, correct. How you uh, sell yourself? So we call that integrated marketing, IMC, right? Mm -hmm. Integrated marketing communications. That's what IMC stands for. That's also something that you need to consider for your business. Mm -hmm. Even your ethics, ethical market, ethical marketing. So mm -hmm. everyone has all these great sales strategies, but are they really ethical? Coca Cola, mm. I love you, Coca Cola. I'm sorry to pull pull out you know specific corporation corporations today but i want y'all to study how coca-cola advertises they're freaking geniuses apple oh absolutely apple is another one apple is the bomb.com in advertising but they, they pre-launch oh, like so, nobody's like what? they could pre-order 
and what? when they pre-order they sell out before it actually launches like that now i will say this apple if you google and you really start to study what holistic marketing is apple is actually a really good representation of that here's why mm. So I mentioned earlier, you got to take care of all parts of your body, right? right? So you got to take care of your mental health, your physical health, and your spiritual health, right? right. That makes you a whole being, right? If right. one of those things is thrown off, you something wrong with you. Facts. So same thing with your with your 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 business as well. Mm -hmm. Apple does a great job with their employees. I don't know if you've ever been to an Apple corporate uh, headquarter. No, not at HQ. No, not at HQ. You could just go on TikTok and look at it. Bomb. Okay. Google's another place. Very good with holistic marketing. Instacart is actually very good with with. I've never even thought about going. There's to one Instacart. in Atlanta. Downtown, not too far from Peachtree. You're, mm, we're, we're, we were fact, just over there. We need to we need to actually, all three of us, well, when Jeter gets back, but we need to all go there because the way they even make it so comfortable for people to work. It's like, mm. it's like you're not even working. You're in a space that you forget that you're at work. That's how you actually build like employee satisfaction. Got you. If the people that work for you don't like you, your business is, is, is off. Right. So, right. so holistic marketing looks at everything and why I chose that lane is because I do come from, um, having corporate clients. I came from agency, mm -hmm. left college, came straight to Atlanta, had a choice between Philly and Atlanta. I chose Atlanta. I had family here. It was warmer here. I didn't have to do the all seasons thing. It was mm -hmm. closer from college. I didn't have to pay for all that luggage going back up to Philly. Right. And I was like, I'm gonna stay in Atlanta. I loved it. It was new. Mm -hmm. Philly's home. Got to get out. So I come to this agency. I love this agency, black owned agency. Absolutely. Look, black women own agency. Look, shout out, <laughs> shout out to all the black owned women yes. agencies out here. Yes, and all it. the businesses. Yep. Okay. Atlanta is that's what Atlanta's for. Atlanta is for you to see that it's possible that we're in higher positions, that we're you know seven eight figure companies here. I mean we're, we're we we dominate here for sure. I love Atlanta mm -hmm. for that. So worked for Precise Communications, loved it. What I realized though is that these corporations are extremely smart in their intention. What do you mean? So I work, I told you I worked for an agency, right? Right. So we would get corporate contracts. Mm -hmm. These corporations knew that the only way that they were going to talk to black and brown people was to hire black and brown marketers. That's why, black, that's why people, if, let me Got just you. say this right now. If you are looking for a marketing job, let me look at the camera. All you need to do, baby, is turn your Insta, your, your LinkedIn, edit your LinkedIn to be open for work and look for mark, marketing anything, director, digital, account manager, anything. These corporations need black marketers, not mm. not marketers. They need black marketers. Right, right, they, right. They, they, they're following the numbers. We already know, if you don't know the stats, I tell people to go look at nielsen.com, N-I-E-L-S-E-N. -E I used to also work for them. They're a data company. They track mm -hmm. consumerism. Right, right, right. I remember you talking about that uh -huh. in the mastermind. That, uh -huh. that was a good, that was a good, uh, that was a good link. Yeah. I use that. Yeah. So Nielsen tracks consumerism of all races. They mm -hmm. study us. They, right. they watch what we buy, what we watch, what we're spending on, um, what we eat, mm -hmm. what, where we shop, when we shop, right. how we shop. They are tracking all of this. And not just not, they're not targeting us, but it's good data to have, right? Exactly. Especially if you're going to be in marketing or have a business, you got to know where you're, where the money's at, right? 100%. These corporations are very smart. They know that black people, they have already projected that black people were going to be the number one consumer 10 years ago. Mm. <laughs> Let's, let me talk about that real quick. Okay. I'm going to ask a selfish question. On this Go podcast, ahead. I do ask that selfish <laughs> I questions. love them. Right? Mm -hmm. So... I have, I don't know, I want to say, I want to say I have 30, 30 team members. Okay. Right. And like, if we were to divide that into departments. Can you just dab me up real quick? <laughs> like, how old are you? Are you uh, even 30 27. Yet? You have, you literally have more teammates than your age. Can you Pretty just, much. no, can you let that sit? God <laughs> wanted me to say it to you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I hope you add claps to the audio right here. <laughs> this is where you insert claps. Go ahead. You nah, got 30 but like, employees. But like I got, we have, we have about 30 uh, staff members right now. I don't like, I, see, I don't like calling them staff, I don't. team. I, so I our culture. Team. team is cute. Could, team is cool, but we're family oriented environment because it's a it. family business. So we call them family members. Okay. Cousins. So They're cousins. Like, you got 30 extra cousins that you work there. Right, right, right. So <laughs> I, we split them off into departments, like you said, right? You got mm -hmm. HR. So this is our departments. We got HR, marketing, mm -hmm. sales uh legal and finance mm -hmm. credit mm -hmm. and i'm feel like i'm missing one but what about oh you said hr okay yeah yeah hr just to recruit the talent right oh okay oh operations operations okay. boom right those are all six departments those that's a really good that's a really good base that, that, i mean you really don't even need any more departments really i promise you, you don't 
So it's just a matter of duplicating what I have or scaling what I have. If or you want to what I have. absolutely scale, you can already you can always scale. You, I mean, people have to think about like the buildings that mm -hmm. we walk into. They're based off of a four pillar building. Okay. They have 20,000 floors off of four pillars. Right. When the construction of that building has four blocks. Right. There's 27,000 floors. Mm -hmm. So you don't need more. You don't need wider. You need taller. So right. scale is about going up. It's not right. about going out necessarily. Right. So I think what you have is solid. I think what... So what was your question? What You said you wanted to selfish. So I wanted to make sure that the holistic... Because you said it's in every department. Every department. So within each department what is necessary in order for it to be holistic okay in that in that in that in that category there's in that a couple term. of things one you need to make sure and this is for every body listening you need to make sure that people love what the hell they're doing how do you find that out Got you they're gonna lie to you of course oh, I, love I do like anonymous surveys okay surveys are cute how you really know is well one how you really know somebody loves their job is if they were designed to do that shit. Oh yeah, I got I got people that's I got I got at least eighty percent. Okay. That are that way. How are you checking that? The only way I check that is by doing biweekly and monthly surveys. Okay, surveys are cute. You want me to go deeper? Yes, you want me please. Give me something. By all means. So I use astrology for everything. Mm -hmm. Why? The stars don't lie. That's something that literally none of us can control yet it controls us. Mm -hmm. Right now we're in a full moon in Virgo season. Everybody's hard working right now. Why? Because Virgo signs are known for working. Beyonce's a, Beyonce dropped her album right before the full moon. Anyway, um, you need to get to know their sign. Not mm -hmm. just their sign, but their birth chart. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. You need to get to know their birth chart. And after you get to know their... And, and you don't even need to know that because it's a lot of information to consume yeah. and a lot of energy. You need to do an activity to where everyone finds out what, you know, like a disc assessment? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so those are so corny, but those are based off of astrology. Mm -hmm. But people can lie on those. You right. can't lie about the time that you were born, mm -hmm. when you were born, nor the day. Right. So I would do something really fun. I would, as, as somebody who is trying to be a thought leader, as somebody who's trying to be a soul-led business owner, that's mm -hmm. what I get from you, that vibration. Mm -hmm. I feel God upon you. We literally pray before this podcast. I think you should do some research yourself on your own birth chart mm -hmm. because that is going to be where you find all the strengths mm -hmm. in yourself and the weaknesses. So the mm -hmm. AKA the opportunities that you need to be become who you really are supposed to. Right. So for those who don't know what birth charts are, because I know everybody just talks about money. Nobody talks about souls, but birth charts are literally the they're almost like this record of who you are supposed to be mm -hmm. while you're on this lifetime, while right. you're in this life path right now. Right. right. So people get so like, oh, I don't believe in horoscopes. This is not horoscopes. You shouldn't believe in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you should believe in is science. Mm -hmm. And anything that has to do with astrology is science. You right. can't deny it. Right. Okay. Right. So right. let me tell you what, why I'm telling you this. I met a brother who is also in marketing. He's a consultant. He did my birth chart. He did my human design chart. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to tag that later on. Go on Google, human design chart. That's going to tell you every single thing you need to do in business. It's going to tell you every single thing you need to do in parenting. It's going to tell you every single thing you need to do for your lady, mm -hmm. for your man. It's going to tell you everything you need to do for your leadership, for your spirituality. It's going to tell you everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily like, again, this horoscope thing, like somebody's writing what a Virgo should do for the day. You know, right, they're not doing right. that. This is like literally based off the time you were born. This is the kind of leader you're going to be. I met this dude who... Now, hear how play it is. is. He has corporations, and I'm talking like tech corporations. So when I say tech, I want you to picture dollar signs just went mm -hmm. around my whole head. Mm -hmm. he, he gets contracted by tech corporations to come in as an HR and marketing consultant to see if the people that he's got working for him are actually designed to do their role based off their human design chart. He's a That's master astrologist. That's interesting. I never heard that before. That's actually new. That's actually something I've never heard in regards to, you know, understanding if your people are working or or designed to to work. Because think about this. We weren't designed to be podcasters. No, we're just taught good production. Right. We were taught that. Right. There's a difference. I know that I'm designed to do this. I got now once I once I listened to God, you know, and made certain movements. And I don't know if we have enough time to really talk about like how I ended up here. But no, I know ahead. that I'm designed here. But when I read, when he read, the man I'm talking about, mm -hmm. when he read my human design chart, I knew that I was literally supposed to be right where I am. I was supposed to create holistic marketing. I was mm -hmm. supposed to only focus on wellness brands. I was supposed to work 
first with vegan brands because that would have been that's where I got my start, and mm -hmm. then branch off to everything else and really teach people what holistic really means. Right. Because a lot of people are running holistic businesses and don't know it because they don't think that they have a vegan product. Vegan equals holistic. No, that's that's in, that's incorrect. I actually used to think the same thing I know. for a long period of time a lot until of people. you know you actually do your research yeah. and understand that holistic is more of a lifestyle. It is. You know what I mean? It's a it's a mind, body and soul. It's mm -hmm. a mind, body and soul connection. So like I don't work with just vegan brands. I work with doulas, people who bring children into this world, right? Mm -hmm. Midwives. I work with urban farms, people who are building fresh vegetation in urban cities like Philly mm -hmm. and like Brooklyn, you know? I work with master herbalists. Right. So the fact that you can go and buy tea in the store right now, that's because a master herbalist worked with a corporation to brand that and make that available for you. So you're working. So what would you call that niche? For the bigger, I guess holistic and wellness. That's how we, that's how we. Holistic we, and wellness is your target. That's how we, that's how we break it down. I kind of, I kind of just say, sometimes I say like soul led entrepreneurs. Um, you know, it's, it's not as sexy to say coaches consultants like in my lane is th they yeah. can be a coach like they can right. be a vegan coach like i worked with shout out to surviving vegan i worked with vegan coaches people who will literally coach somebody to a better lifestyle a right, healthier right, lifestyle right, right? Right, right but it's not sexy it comes off like i'm a regular marketer i have to distinguish myself mm -hmm. because i literally you know how important that is we have right. to talk to who we're talking to right right exactly so yeah so i typically say wellness entrepreneurs holistic leaders healers i use the word healers a lot um, that has really attracted a lot of my, a lot of my family members, aka you mm -hmm. know, aka clientele. Right. Um, the healer word. Yeah. Healers. So, okay. So, uh, yeah. I was I was curious because a lot of people, like I said, a lot of people, you know, put holistic, vegan or vegetarian right. or anything that's dealing with wellness, right. health and wellness in that category. And I like wellness better than holistic. I well, I like holistic. They're kind of like neck and neck, my favorite words, because for a while I used to coin myself as vegan marketer you know like the vegan mm -hmm. marketing specialist or whatever but i changed that because if you just were to change your diet and you didn't fix your trauma from your mind you would still be messed up you would absolutely so the whole i don't even know how you'd be able to do the diet <laughs> tell if me it's not tell me about it because isn't 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 losing weight or you know fitness everything dealing with your psychology it is so I mean, you could probably push through it and still get the body. But like you said, you're still not. It's like right. when trauma from your young age, it's like when people say, um, so there's a difference. I was reading this book. It was called Male Versus Man, right? Mm. So I, I read that. I'm, I'm very big in like personal development and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the gentleman said, I can't remember his name. He was an actor, but he wrote the book and he said, there's a difference between a male versus a man, uh, a male seeks to be serviced and a man seeks to be of service oh male like m-a-l-e M -A -L -E. E. okay male. male seeks to be of seeks to be serviced and a man seeks to be of service mm. right so he said that a male is just a boy in a grown man body right mm. so in my eyes i think when you go through the fitness journey and then you're still not you know mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. how you are psychologically mm -hmm. all you are is a younger self mm -hmm. in a grown person body yes right yep. if, you know a boy or a girl in a yep. grown woman or man body yep. right because you haven't fully used that uh, that you haven't gotten that far psychologically correct or grown correct. psychologically yet correct. right so i just you know that's that's just what i've learned from just reading going through things relationships and etc but yep. to kind of tag to uh, the, you know tag back in the holistic aspect and the marketing aspect right the do you think that people have a i want to call it a baby business mm. right you know how i was saying that you have a, a grown you have a, a male which is a, a baby a, a boy and a grown man body mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. think that that can happen in business definitely definitely i think it's childish to only start a business to make a lot of money mm. it's premature i just wouldn't say childish i think everybody should have a childlike personality right but i think it's premature Mm -hmm. I think it's premature. And I also want people to remember their legacy. We for, we, we opened the, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm so happy that you started this podcast because um, the pandemic, everybody made some money, especially if you, I mean, if you just, if you were at home and turned on your camera, you made some money. Yep. But now you're getting tested into those two, three, four, five year businesses. Mm -hmm. And if you can sustain past 2027, then you might be here for the long run. Absolutely. You know, so I think it's premature when people just chase the bag. I think there are a lot of baby businesses. I think people, people psychologically treat their baby, 
like almost like okay <laughs> we gonna get deep i love this podcast already so you know like if your dad i just like i go through this all the time with my with with talking to my boyfriend because he has children mm -hmm. there's a difference from a dad that is at home every single day present in the child's life versus a, a dad that just provides right right what absolutely. kind of dad do you have I have a dad that's in my life. Okay. He's present. He provided. Yeah, he's, pre he's very present. Like you just saw our president. Yeah, he did. He did just come down and say, hey, yeah, yeah. hey introduce himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a man. That's, right. a, that's a man. That's a man of God. Mm -hmm. So same thing with people's businesses. I think people come in and they're present by, you know, promoting or they're gotcha. present by, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I need another contractor. Let's, let's collab on a, mm -hmm. on a podcast or some shit like that. But I think by being present in your business takes a different soul. Right. It takes you to soul search. Yeah. I just became the leader I wanted to three months ago. Mm. I've always been a great person. People have always loved me. I became the leader I wanted to because one of my clients, I took her inner child healing course and I refused to let my four-year-old traumatized little girl run my business anymore. And a lot of mm. black women and black men, we have our childhood trauma running our business. That's why we go Absolutely. so hard. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and i think and and so let me let me ask you this right yeah. let's let's actually start from let's actually start from holistic marketing in a in a in a, in a definition sense right okay. so what are the steps to create a holistic marketing business okay so One, people know what you did okay so i think it's such a that's such a dense that's just a dense, uh, I think one, go on Google and look up what Google says about holistic marketing. And then I'm going to tell you what I think the steps are. But holistic marketing, when you look it up, it, it's literally just making sure that all of the departments of your business all coincide with each other and they all feel the same, even though they have different responsibilities, right? Mm -hmm. So my mom's kids all feel the same, even though we're all different, right? Right. So I think the steps to transforming your business into a holistic business is one looking at your intention of everything you do. I mean, literally writing it out, asking yourself, why am I with this person? Why did I start this podcast? Before you name your freaking podcast, Google the words and the definition of every single freaking word of your podcast. So the I digital empire. I did that. What did you find when you, when you kind of did some research? So, um, digital meaning anything that's on the internet, okay. internet money. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it in, uh, mainstream terms, okay. right? Um, empire and the, the key reason I picked empire is because we have a family business, mm. right? So we are strong. We strongly believe in creating a family empire. Now mm. I did look up the definition of it, but I'm telling you the meaning of right, why right, I right, chose of specific the words, right? Mm. The intentionality behind it. A lot of people from my, from my side of the story, right? started off as most people as working a job, mm -hmm. right? And so from there, most people don't know how to transition from working a job from creating their own empire, then from creating their own, or let me rephrase, creating their own business, mm -hmm. then from creating their own business to creating a family empire, mm. a family business empire. Okay, so pause, mm -hmm. you asked me the steps. The first step, even though people are gonna listen to that and they, they're gonna hear business, then empire. Mm -hmm. But what you didn't, what what people are not gonna look at is that you had to understand what it took to be a family member first, to even Absolutely. open that business, Absolutely. to even see that legacy. Mm -hmm. So the steps to opening up a, a holistic business is to see your purity, to see your flaws, to see your ugly, to see what you don't wanna bring into the business and what you do wanna bring in the business mm -hmm. and really just constantly get to know yourself. It's not overnight. What's going on, family? You guys already know I appreciate you for checking out this episode. So you guys know that I've been trading and building high-level skill sets for years now. You see me on my Forex journey, my stock investment journey, my portfolio journey, a day in the life of everything. And so what I want to do is I want to give back to you. I want to make sure that you all learn everything that's in my brain. So what I have done is specifically in regards to skill sets is I've created a course uh, like a whole course like this is the best thing that i've ever come out with since sliced bread <laughs> right it's a forex course on how exactly to build wealth create high level skill sets and i want to teach it to you i want to give back it's not even like it's super affordable like you could like your daughter could do it yes your, your, a five-year-old could do it and that's what i want to help you guys do i want to give back to you so if you want to learn exactly how to help build high level skill sets i want you to click this link right here this link is going to break down everything for you and literally change your whole life so go check it out check out the trade syndicate check out the way that we do things check out the chart slayer check out your boy all right see you on the next one it's not exactly i worked with 
I've, I mean, in one year, I'm so blessed. My first year of business, I worked with like 52 businesses. Blessed. That's I don't crazy. know how I did it with maybe two to three employees. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm a girl who I really like intimate employees like i i love like lean a lean team yeah oh i love a lean team oh that was sexy i like that i love a lean team yeah um partly because i'm my my biggest skill is interpersonal Mm -hmm. i want to get to know your mama i want to get to know (laughs) you your culture oh y'all pray on the floor oh how you do that show me how you don't can i get down and pray with Mm y'all i'm that person i'm not shy of personalities of cultures of foods of taste of flavors i love all that Mm -hmm. spice it up for me right so when i come to my my clients and i'm the face at first and then they meet my team i bring every piece of my team to every single call right i bring a little bit of my muslims my muslim uh shout out to naima i bring a little bit of her culture i bring a little bit of that southern hospitality mm-hmm. from from care i bring a little bit of this i bring a little bit of that like i bring pieces of my employees so when you think about why that is so foundational for a holistic business is because it goes back to the purity of who I am. I had to know my strengths absolutely, to know where I want this business to go. Mm-hmm. So, and I also had to know my ugly. I struggled at that agency that I was at. I was good. I was good because, but I was fighting two roles. I right. wouldn't, I was scared to leave because how dare you leave an agency that pays you good and on the eighth floor in downtown Atlanta and it's sexy what? black women working all around you and you get to wear heels to work. You got a, <laughs> you got your own badge in the, in the, in the garage. You get the, I mean, access to all this. We going everywhere. I'm flying, you know, all these places. And I'm just like, why would you leave that? And I really had to know, I had to learn myself. So I mm-hmm. think you know, when you're marketing and that, and that just goes back to just basic marketing stuff. You don't even have to do holistic marketing. Your captions are going to suck if you don't even know who you are or who you're talking, talking to. to. Yep. They're going to suck. That's basic marketing. Yep. You know, like that's a basic marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. I just teach it in a holistic way because I'm like, all right, honey. So you talked about your strengths. Thanks for this call. So what do you struggle with? And can I talk to your team without you on the call? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you just, you talked a lot about strengths, weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So like, SWOT analysis. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Can you explain what a SWOT analysis is for people yeah. who don't know? So SWOT is a basic market marketing principle that we use before we touch any brand. Before you even want to get started or anything, you should assess. Mm-hmm. So like you're dating, it's almost like you're dating your business, right? Yep. So if you were going to date with a home girl or girl you was feeling, mm-hmm. you would ask her certain questions to find out her strengths, her weaknesses, her opportunities, and her th- and the threats that make the red flags, as right. we call it. Mm-hmm. Same thing you're doing in your business. So you look for S's strengths. Uh, and it's S W O T SWAT like that. So S is strengths, W is weaknesses, O is opportunities and T is threats. And we, what you're basically doing is creating your marketing strategy. Mm. You're looking at the whole of who you are and right. or your business, right? Cause you can do a SWAT analysis on self as well. And exactly. you can do a SWOT analysis on, on your business. employees. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you can have them. That's a good activity for you because you got 30 employees. Have everybody do a SWOT analysis on, on somebody themselves. else. Oh, no, on someone somebody else. Somebody else in their department. Oh, so if there's a one man department, like maybe you have like one lawyer, then then, you know, work it out. You you can even have it because people can lie about themselves. Some people can't see they're ugly. Mm. So you can either do it with somebody else like one on one or they can do it for themselves. But you could do a SWOT analysis for your business. I would recommend it if you're a marketer or if you're just um, a a coach or consultant. I I recommend doing a SWOT analysis on on everything, on everything, your social media before you even post stuff. Before you open up your podcast, your YouTube page, your business, have other people do SWOT analysis on you too. You know? So, I think everyone knows what S S and W is, but mm. how would you do opportunities and threats? So I love the word weakness because I don't. I actually have eliminated that from my vocabulary. I only use opportunities, mm-hmm. but I do have to know how ugly this business is in order to know the opportunity. So your your weaknesses and your opportunities are actually the same thing. So okay. if I said I don't, I am not the best swimmer. What is the opportunity for me? Either hire a coach, to, a person that's actually good at swimming. Mm-hmm. So it's just a positive way of looking at the weakness, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if my weakness for small businesses or coaches, if my weakness is that I am really, really camera shy, then the opportunity is for you to take a content class. Yep. Hit up the digital Got marketing, <laughs> uh, hit, hit up the, the digital empire and mm-hmm. ask to be a guest because right. that will test you being in front of the camera, go mm-hmm. live more. The opportunity is for you to do more lives. And if three people show up, if one person shows up, if nobody shows up, practice for the replay. You know, mm. so the weakness is the opportunity. It's just in a positive 
perspective. You know, it's in a gotcha. what do they say optimistic versus pessimistic. Yep. So the weakness is the pessimistic because you gotta mm-hmm. be real, right? Right. You gotta say, okay, well, I, I do. I'm, I'm not the best at X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. but that's an opportunity for me to do X, Y, and Z. So how would you? What about the threats? The threat is a little bit more sexier. That is where you really look at your competition. Mm-hmm. So I don't even use the word competition either. I'm, I know I'm so like extra. I create my own dictionary. I need to come out with it's one. It's all right. It's part of business. So um, we're unique because we don't use the word competition in my business. I mm-hmm. literally eliminate it. I use the word inspiration. Okay. Because competition comes from a war combat mentality. Right. I got to fight you to win. No, I'm just going to be unique and you're going to be unique and we're going to talk to our unique audiences and we're going to both make a lot of money because of it. Right. So I use the word inspiration. Um, and I do this because a lot of black women, when we get to the top, we get and this. Let me tell you the real story. I got this black women and I um, black women are so shocked when they meet me or they hear me speak because mm-hmm. the way I look is not how they feel from me. They mm-hmm. look and see a light skinned girl. She's got lashes on, but no one knows. I don't know how to do my own makeup. Right. No one knows I'm a tomboy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I forget to put socks on with my sneakers. Mm-hmm. And I really am a good cook and I really hate the club, but I like hookah a little bit. It's just sometimes. It's just sometimes. It's so toxic. But that's my little that's my little my little vice. I'm weak. But when you see me, you would think the opposite, right? Right. So I, I cut that word out of my vocabulary so I can literally teach and practice myself not to judge other black women and work together. So we use the threat category when you're doing your SWOT analysis. Mm-hmm. We do threats by or we look for threats in our inspiration. So David Shans and you, right? Okay. You both have a podcast. Yep. The biggest threat is that you don't have a production like David Shans, but now you do. Right. The other biggest threat is that you don't have the network that he does. So the opportunity is for you to show up in places that you have never been, that you would have never even thought to walk in. Got you. Because now you're meeting people that you're, if you haven't met them, then your audience hasn't. Mm. Because you're the thought leader. They're coming to listen to you. So I just taught you a little bit about astrology. I would put this in your life and I hope to speak this. I would hope you go and go to a, go to astrology conferences, go to like something that's dope. You just happen to be in Vegas and you're like, is that, does that say astrology? You'd be like, all right, I'm just walking here. It's $25 to go in. Just go. Mm-hmm. Cause you might meet a master astrologist who gets paid a hundred thousand dollars a year for, from one company to go and do the HR thing I was telling you about earlier. That's lit. You bring them on the podcast. Maybe I should change uh, businesses. <laughs> I get paid a hundred thousand dollars a year to just consult, consult about astrology and and know if a person is, is designed to work there. That doesn't sound that is, that sounds pretty good pretty to me. Good, okay, and that you can sound, be all hippie and shit. Bro, okay, look, dressing, <laughs> give me some locks flowing, chain, get an ombre style, some meditation music. Okay, okay. come in here with some some real uh, uh, feng shui okay. shades. Okay. 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 Got some sage burning in the day. Right. You know, get the little feather and, right here. You feel what I'm saying? Like. I Not come the in feather. there and then bring dashiki in. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. And then go like this. And Peace then, queen. See? <laughs> come in there and make a hunt six <laughs> figures <laughs> and say peace. Okay. Seriously. That's not a bad, not a bad that's thing. That's not a bad. I might need to talk to him. But yeah. So the whole point is to look at your inspiration. The whole point is to look at look at who who you aspire to be like, you know? If you want a omnipresence like David Shans, shot, we've shot him out plenty of times. You have That's to because, tag him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We you have to tag him. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you want something like that, you can have that, but you have to see where you are first and mm-hmm. what the opportunities lie to get to that inspiration. Absolutely. So it's not really a threat. I, I haven't found a key word that's similar to the word threat that's less combative. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still looking. So if you got any, if anybody wants to put that in the comments, please. Um, my dictionary folks but yeah threats is basically checking out your market research or your competitors analysis got you i felt like i didn't know what ont was in it like extensively until right now oh so now i've done it i've done swat analysis but i feel like the ont was my weakness do you see what i'm saying well thank you so that's why that was more of a selfish question but i feel like most people don't know what that is they don't you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so the fact that you kind of broke that down in a way where it's like, hey, if you're struggling in this, the opportunity is pretty much solving mm-hmm. the, the problem yes, with literally. the threat and the mm-hmm. weakness. That's yeah. pretty much what it and is. And you'll notice that um, good marketers, and, and let me tell you this, um, for those of you wondering like, okay, so what do I do after my SWOT analysis? Well, you take your opportunities list, mm-hmm. you take your threat, well, you take all the lists, you take, you take the, the S list, your strengths, you take the W, your weaknesses, and you take the O, and you look at how to eliminate more of the weaknesses by expanding on your strengths. So gotcha. going back to the camera shy girl, mm-hmm. right? Or the camera shy example. I'm camera shy, but 
I can speak very well in person. Right. 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 So the opportunity is to go more on live. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take that a step further because the threat was that I don't have the omnipresence like some of my other competitors. Mm -hmm. Well, now we're going to make sure that we talk more in person, but we got somebody recording in the background or we set up a tripod and we forget about it and just right. go in. Right. So you know now you just made that in the threats and the weakness into mm -hmm. a strength where mm -hmm. that opportunity became a strength Correct. over time. And guess what that whole thing that I just did was a strategy. Mm. A strategy ain't nothing but the roadmap to get to where you're trying to go. Like and you can do this in every department in your business. You can do this. In, you can do this in yourself. Mm. You can do this in every department in your business. If you have a money strength versus a if you have a money strength or you have something going on with your HR do a SWOT analysis. Do a SWOT analysis on the department as a whole, and mm -hmm. then do a do a SWOT analysis on the performance of that department. So there's a difference. Mm. One is more HR. So right. like the strength is that everybody likes each other, but the weakness is that nobody really works well together. One's really outgoing, another one's really loud or or quiet or whatever. So the opportunity is to find a balance between the hype person and the quiet shy guy. Can right? you? So we have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So. There's no way I can even know who a lot of these people are. are yeah. So do you feel that it would be great to have the heads of the departments do a SWOT analysis? Definitely on empower them and, them. Then, and then bring it back to me? Correct. Definitely empower okay. them. Empower them to care. Okay. Being a leader is about empathy. Right. It's not about being able to do the job the best. It's about being able to hold the whole line together. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had to ride a canoe in Bahamas. I've had a blessed life and to be able to travel and I love water. So I always like to do banana boats with I, with people I know who can't swim and are afraid of sharks because right. I love to scare the shit out of them. Sorry. Dang. I love risk taking. Scared money don't make no money. All right. So no, I'm just playing. No, I don't do that. But I did have a situation where I thought a shark was under me and I was freaking out, but I forgot I could swim. So anyway, if you think about riding a banana boat, if you've never done that in the Bahamas, please go do that. It's the funnest thing in the world. But if one person, one scared person falls off, the whole boat flips. Right. So having leaders is about making sure that the boat stays by calming everyone down. Mm -hmm. Because the banana boat is literally like you have a yacht pulling you. Right. And y'all are crashing against the wave. So you got you can't have nobody like too hype. Right. Because they'll flip everybody over in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So leadership is more empathy led than it is actually like physically led. Got you. And I got think you. you making them do a SWOT analysis <clears throat> requires them to learn about their department. And you are now empowering them to run your business without you. Absolutely. And, you know? and we need that. I want to go to one thing I want, and this is this is to anybody. <clears throat> this is to anybody who creates masterminds. But if you are trying to create a mastermind, bring in a leadership expert. Absolutely changes the game of your business. What? Bring in a spiritual uh, therapist or somebody somebody that's going to teach you how to not just mindset and money and business that that's cute. Teach you how to become a better human being, or or think empathetically about people bring in a therapist like i said a therapist or some type of leadership coach or expert mm -hmm. to any mastermind you do bring it to your podcast bring it to a lot any anywhere where you gather people mm -hmm. game changer oh yeah i've actually peeped that um circle of ceos of course i'm go oh you gone it's actually a surprise i wasn't supposed to say that oh dang that's okay oh people know now yeah they know yeah so it's on live pretty <laughs> it's fine. i'm going so <laughs> <laughs> you know J.O., mm -hmm. Justin Owens. Mm -hmm. um, he, Not personally, but hey, hey, Justin. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we know him personally, but just the fact that he's always on, he teaches leadership, and he's on it. every single thing that any part of the Circle of CEOs host or individually. Right. Right? Because he's that person that is... For them. For them. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Like you were just saying, you always need to bring a leadership expert. Mm -hmm. He's the leadership expert. I love that. You see what I'm saying? So I, I just, I never realized why... They always brought him. I mean, I understand why right, it's important, course. right? But I didn't know there was an actual strategy on. Hey, you need this because of this yes. specific reason. Yes. I just you. I would just bring a leadership expert because you need to learn how to become a leader. Circle of CEOs is very holistic. For sure, absolutely. I don't even care if they'll have vegan snacks there or not. The way they run their business. Shout out to the people that might have laughed when they listen to this. I do be trying to make people laugh. I think laughter is the best medicine. <laughs> But the way they have strategically put these black men together was so freaking intentional. And yeah. it was a SWOT analysis done perfectly well. Yeah, it was. For it was sure. perfectly. They took everybody's strengths. They only, and even if you watch their content, Neo's always the leader of their content because Neo is, is content. Is the, I was about to say, is the he taught embodiment. Them. 
Neo is the bomb.com of content. Shout out to my Philly brother. The reason why, um, even like even and all of them know sales, but I think Marcus and Neo are the Yeah, they're the they're the driving force of sales. They're the oh. driving force. Now God, they're good. At least in the circle of CEOs, of course, yeah. you know, J.O. does nothing but sales, but not in that way. And not in, right. Not in that way. And I, and I think, and, and you know what, sales might be all of their, all of their strengths because they are, you know. I mean, they got to sell I mean, they, to make yeah, money. Yeah, definitely. Um, and even that, like I get that question. I don't know if you, if you were trying to take the conversation there, but I get that question a lot. Like how, how do I not come off, come off salesy, salesy? Again, it, I think it just goes back to your intention. You got to yeah. really deep, deeply dive into these people and and do focus groups, guys. That was the one thing I learned from corporate America. Get a bunch of people that you want to work with or that are like or that you would want to market to. If they got money, they don't got money. They just mm -hmm. started the business or don't get them on a Zoom call. Ask seven to ten questions about what you, you know about whatever you're interested in. If it's if it's like you know, would you buy this kind of product? Why wouldn't you buy this? Why you know what, what would make you invest in this? What kind of content do you like? and survey these people live mm. one let me tell you what that's going to do that's going to make people feel like you're actually trying to build something for them to use because a lot exactly. of a lot of entrepreneurs and businesses they be coming up with the like oh i'm trying to solve your problems but who told you that was my problem like instagram be doing that who told you to update this app because i want to see the survey yo they did uh, that's been a big thing i've seen that huge like it's annoying all over it's very annoying but they you'll notice that they'll go back and try something else or redo mm -hmm. it or whatever so so yeah so i think um yeah get to know get to know who you're you're selling to and it won't come off selling you know and change your vocabulary too learn how to change your vocabulary i do that i've done that a couple times on this podcast don't say solve take it out of your entire marketing marketing messaging take it out you not yeah. i mean not not solve um you're sell. talking about sell yeah sell take that out take mm -hmm. use the word solve use the word serve you know right, use the right, word right, evolve right. Mm -hmm. You know, evolve is another sexy word. A lot of people don't tap into like go on dictionary.com and take some of these words out and, and put a more pure word behind it mm -hmm. because that's going to teach you how to lead with it a little bit lighter. Exactly. Why they like in sales, they don't use, Oh, he's a sales rep. He's a customer success manager oh. or he's a, uh, account executive. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like they don't use those words cause they know that sales yeah. rep or yeah. closer or setter is yeah. salesy. There you go. But that's lit. There that's, you go. I feel like that. I feel like that. Did was you dope. learn something today? I, feel I like, did. Look, I, feel like... I learned a lot. What's your, I should have brought up. I need to reread. I mean, rewatch this. What is your sign? I didn't even ask. Scorpio. Oh, you definitely learned a lot, brother. You felt me. First of all, you probably felt my heart beating over here. <laughs> You're a Scorpio. Y'all are deep. We naturally are. This is who we are. You feel what I'm saying? This I love Scorpio. Naturally... Shout out to Drake. He was the first Scorpio I knew. And then I started to Drake? care. No, I'm just playing. I'm about to say out of everybody um... in life. <laughs> Out of everybody that existed in this entire planet, Drake was the very first Scorpio I that think you know. Because Drake made Scorpios, I mean, he put y'all on he put y'all on the pedestal. Y'all lights camera action because of Drake. I just I'm just saying. Like you Oprah know, and J. Cole gave Aquariuses us Aquariuses, you know, you know, light. J. Cole named his whole album. I think one of his songs is like January twenty eighth or something. Like he gave us light. I feel like Drake <laughs> gave us a persona. Okay, he did smack this with a, with the whole stamp of <laughs> this is what Scorpios do. Because anytime I mention no, th this this is side note. Anytime we mention, anytime I say I'm a Scorpio, like oh, oh Drake, lover uh, boy, oh run, Scorpio. Uh, that's of course you are. <laughs> that's all I get all the time. Yeah. Like oh, what well, what I do? Right. <sighs> you just a Scorpio. No, just, uh -uh. We don't even get a reason. It's just right. because of the stamp that we get as a Scorpio. You guys are it. Let me let me just tell you this. Me, and I don't know your birth chart, but I'm gonna tell you this. Just from knowing and looking at this production, and you being able to answer some of the questions that I asked, I could definitely see you fitting in the Scorpion the Scorpion album for sure. And There's not an album. No, I'm just playing. I was just trying to make a reference. But the reason why I say that is because <laughs> Scorpios are the number one researchers. I are actually, we? I would love to have a Scorpio on my team. Really? Yes. You guys are addicted to making sure that you have the right answer. You don't, you don't like that to be wrong. That is absolutely correct. And you're very honest about saying, I don't know. That's absolutely correct. I love that about y'all. That is, ab like, I look to improve. Yes, constantly. Every day. Like, I love Scorpio. Within the business, like, and within myself, but like, talking about business-wise, like, mm -hmm. I look, like, people get irritated because you're like, when do you ever stop working? You can't. I'm like, 
I'm always thinking of yes. something that Your will brain. make things more seamless and better. And mm -hmm. like, I don't even want to be involved. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how that's how I'm looking at the business. I'm like, OK, well, OK, well, the HR team is m going at maximum efficiency, right? Like 100 mm percent. -hmm. Mm -hmm. But can they do 110? <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you this, though. Make sure you rest. Oh, yeah. No, I do do that. I yes. do do that. I do do that for sure. Producer got us on the countdown. We out of here, y'all. No, but like, I definitely want, <laughs> I definitely want people to know where they can contact you, where yes. they can reach out to you. Yes. Where can people get to know you? So definitely follow me on Instagram. That's where I nurture the most. I would say I get to look at the camera. Um, underscore Loki Nadia underscore, or just look up the number one holistic marketer. I'll pop up. Um, mm. I've got a cute little picture there. Okay, check out some of my content, my pin content specifically. That's how you'll get to know me off rip. Um, check out my website too, lokinadia.com. You'll see kind of like what we've done and what we continuously do. Word. So yeah, so um, I want to make sure that I definitely give to my wellness and holistic leaders. I know that you guys may not be tech savvy, so I'm actually going to give a free, F-R-E-E, -E, two E's, a free masterclass on Canva. So I'm going to teach you how to like literally make professional looking work and IG covers and mm. reels and all that good stuff. Even even graphics and stuff, even email email designing like i'm gonna teach you how you can do like photoshop stuff in canva and canva pro is what i'm gonna be you know producing off of i definitely would tell you to invest in that but it's free y'all we're gonna open up the link in october october 1st actually so the first uh i'm sorry not the link excuse me the first master class is september 12th the last one is october 1st That's so nice. you have three chances to get to it we're gonna teach the same thing over and over um, but it's free, y'all. I mean, come. Come and learn. There aren't going to be any replays. I'm not going to charge you a replay afterwards. You just got to come and be present. Get to ask questions. Me and my team. So mm. I know my strength is that um, I love to talk, but I also know one of my weaknesses is that I can over-dominate uh, or dominate conversations. So mm -hmm. I like my team to challenge me and jump in. That's dope. So yeah, so you get to learn from everybody. My graphic designer, my digital uh, storyteller, everybody. That's lit. Yeah. So I want you all to make sure to hit the description yeah. if you're on YouTube or... Uh, if you're on podcast, it's also down there in the description as well. And make sure you look, leave a review, mm -hmm. like, share this video. There's a lot of gems that was on here. And I want to make sure that all of you get everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thanks again, y'all. I'll see you on the next video. Peace. <laughs> Hey family, thank you so much for checking out this episode. I really, really do appreciate it. So I get this question a lot of, hey, how do you get your family on board on everything that you're doing? Your family's everywhere, you're traveling everywhere. This brand of family is huge. And so I wanna teach you guys how to create a family business and build a true legacy for your family. And in order to do so, if you wanna learn exactly how I do that, I want you to check out socialcurrencies.net slash family actually book a call, see exactly how we can assist you in creating wealth for your entire family and breaking that generational curse. We are strongly against generational curses and we want to break generational poverty and build generational wealth and not just wealth, but true wealth. And so I want to help you guys go ahead, tap in again. The site is socialcurrencies.net slash family. And I will see you on the flip side.